What's going on everybody and welcome back to Frankie's Aquatics right here on the wonderful platform that is YouTube. I hope you've had a fantastic week. I have been tested to my absolute limit this week. Um, I have had severe headaches with this heat. As I'm sure many of you have too, it's been an ongoing battle here in the UK in regards to the old heater rooney. Now hopefully this will subside and a little bit of rain will come and then it'll all cool off a little bit. You can see I'm actually shining. I'm actually reflecting the light. Um, it's just so warm. I just can't quite cope with it. But anyway, that's today's video. How is ever firstly? How is everybody doing? Do let me know how you are in the comments below. Now this week's video is going to be something that's really new information for me as well. So I thought it'd be a really good idea to share it with you guys too. Um, and it's completely baffled my old brain. Um, so this week's video, without further ado, is can axolotls actually change colour? Is that even a thing? Well, let's go and find out in this week's video. Come on, let's go. So I receive hundreds of messages each and every day from you wonderful fine people asking me all sorts of questions about axolotl. I'm fairly educated and knowledge on how to care for axolotls. I'd never label myself a professional, although I do know what I'm talking about. Um, and then recently something kind of got brought to my attention which even I was blissfully unaware of. And um, people messaging me asking if axolotls can actually change colour. Can axolotls actually change colour a bit like a chameleon? And my instant reaction to that was, well, no, not to my knowledge. I've kept axolotls for many years and I've never experienced this. Please sh spill the beans. What other information have you got? So a few people, in particular, it's the wild types that are actually changing colour and becoming more lacistic. So this one particular person who's politely asked me not to, not to mention their name directly sent me a photo of a well, what I believe was a lacistic type and swore blind that it was actually, it started off as a wild and over a couple of days, it's literally paled itself out and become, I would consider it a dirty Lucy. And I was bothered, I was boggled by this. My brain was like, Poof. like I said, I've never experienced this before. So I was questioning if it was legitimate. Maybe they got confused. Maybe they had a really heavy, dirty Lucy and it's paled out a bit. Um, thinking it was a wild type. My brain was going through all these sorts of things. But then, funnily enough, a matter of days later, another person also contacted me with the same question. Can a wild axolotl actually turn into a lacistic type axolotl? And I was like, on paper, no, it, it's no, it can't happen. But what is this? This is the second person now. So I asked them for more details and they sent me more images over. And it became apparent that axolotls do have the ability to actually kind of morph out and kind of become different so depending on what environment they're in. So my brain was on it then. It was like, right, this is the second person in a matter of days. And then as I was investigating this further, more people were coming and reaching out to me saying, my axolotl's changing. I don't know what's going on. Is he okay? Is he, is he sick? Is he, he, doesn't, he doesn't look the same anymore. He looks really pale. He looks flush. And I'm really concerned about him. So I had to work quite fast to make sure, obviously, it wasn't a health issue. Um, I'm pleased to confirm, and on the general generalisation of this, it isn't a health issue. 
it does appear that and most amphibians, or a lot of amphibians anyway, do have the ability to match their environment. Really interesting, because like I said, this is new information for me too. But if you keep a wild type axolotl, preferably a darker pigmentation wild type axolotl, on a lighter substrate or lighter surroundings, they will, or they, at least they do have the ability to change into something different depending on the environment that they're keeping in. Now that's just amazing. I know I know there's certain species of frogs that can do this quite freely, a little bit like a chameleon. They have the ability to kind of adapt into their surroundings and their environment in the wild, which in itself is pretty fantastic if you think about it. That would be like me kicking about in an orange room and turning completely orange or going into a red room and going completely... I'm a bit red now, to be perfectly honest. I'm probably, I'm probably living up to that hype right now. <laughs> it's so warm. But isn't it fascinating that axolotls do absolutely carry the ability to kind of blend in better to where you keep them. So the generalization is, after a further investigation online, it is a thing that a lot of amphibians can do, not exclusive to axolotls at all. A lot of amphibians do have the ability to do this. Now I was aware of it with certain amphibians. I was very much aware of it with many species of dart frogs. Uh, many species of frogs can do it. They can blend into their environment so they don't get caught out by predators. A very, very clever technique really. Um, but I was blissfully, blissfully unaware that axolotls also had that capability. So, there's a few things that I want to kind of iron out first and foremost, just to make things a little bit less complicated and a little bit less confusing. Axolotls, gills do go pale, especially in regards to your leucistic types. A lot of people have major concerns when they wake up in the morning, they go and check on their axolotl and their gills are really flushed out and pale and almost like white, almost whiter than their body. Again, this is mainly with the leucistic type axolotl. Now, the reason that happens is because when they're not being quite as active and they're resting, their gills don't have as much blood pumping through them. So that lovely rosy red colour that you're used to seeing isn't going to be there while your axolotl sleeps, or at least it won't be there quite as much. So that's why when you go in and check on your axolotl and they have really pale gills, don't instantly be alarmed. It can be a sign that they are quite sickly, but it's not exclusively a sign that they're quite sickly. It's sometimes just a sign that they've been inactive for a long period of time. It's a bit like me in the morning. If I get up in the morning, I don't wake up like this. I mean, I'm not exactly a picture, but I don't exactly wake up like, hello, how is everybody today? Hello. I wake up like, Ugh, and I drag myself like, a bit like an extra from Michael Jackson's Thriller. <laughs> I kind of drag myself down the stairs trying to get my limbs to work and my joints to kind of bend where they're meant to bend. And then the old kettle goes on. And then I just sit there waiting for the kettle, or stand there waiting for the kettle to boil over. And then I drink my coffee and I'm, pow! I'm back on it again. I'm back straight with it again. I'm in the room. <laughs> I'm in the room. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, axolotls do have that. This is not exclusively to leucistic types either. There is a few other species, particularly the albino and also even the wild types are capable of it, where their gills do just become a little bit flushy. A little bit flushy and not quite fancy, but it's nothing to be quite alarmed about, don't worry. But how and why would axolotls need to change from, let's say, a wild type to a leucistic type? It really is. It's instinctive of them, I guess. I'm talking because this really is new information for me. But yes, axolotls do, or at least they can, change colours to better match their environment. So if you keep them on a light substrate, obviously a sand, nothing else, or a bare bottom and it's got something nice and light underneath, and the decorations are probably a little bit lighter than they're normally used to, the wild types have the ability to kind of patch out a little bit and kind of match their environment a little bit better. Now, there was four cases that I really studied really closely, and the, all four cases were just absolutely mind-bendingly amazing, and the, I, was, I, was, I was massively, massively set back by it. So one particular wild type looked very much like my male flick. It was very, very dark type, wild. And he had literally gone from looking like a wild to looking like a dirty Lucy, a heavy dirty Lucy, but a dirty Lucy nevertheless. Now I instantly thought the person must have been wrong. This particular person must have been wrong. It must have been a, a, a dirty loser that they mistaked for a wild type. And then now it's kind of growing into its own and it's kind of made everything a bit confusing. But they showed me before and after pictures and it was absolutely a dark wild. It's just amazing. So they do have the ability to do this. But do axolotls have the ability to change back if they change their mind? It's a bit like me wearing a hat. I put a hat on, I go, I like this hat, and I wear it for a couple of days. But if I get a bit bored of the hat, can they take their hat off? In other words, can Axolotl change back if it changes? I don't quite know. Uh, with this being completely fresh new information to me, I'm not quite sure of the ins and outs of it. 
Um, I am going to be properly investigating this, and I would hopefully at one point like to have an Axolotl un under my care that has the ability to change, just to be able to study it a bit more closer. Um, one of my Axolotls that I actually I actually sold to a new customer has done this. It has switched and it switched back. Um, it, woo! I need to do more investigation. I need to get on this. I need to be a bit more like Columbo and do a bit of homework on this one because it's totally new information. So you've got to make sure you've got all your corners covered just in case it is something other than just them changing. You've got to make sure that obviously the water is okay. So make sure your tank cycle is ticking along quite nicely and nothing's been unbalanced there. Um, they can go a bit plushy and plump and kind of have all sorts of skin irritations if their water is unbalanced. So you do have to make sure it's obviously not an issue that you've got to deal with. Um, temperature control can also in influence this as well. So make sure your temperatures are good and make sure they've got a nice balanced diet. And that's really that's really the basis of you doing your part as a keeper to make sure your axolotl is safe and sound. But if you've got all those corners ticked and your axolotl starts to change ever so slightly, don't be alarmed, it seems. It seems like it's a new thing that they can do. They've probably been doing it for billions of years. It's new to me. It's not new. They've been doing it for years. I'm, sh I'm sure of it. But now with the power of the internet at our fingertips, more people are able to share these stories as they happen. And I must say, it's blooming fascinating. You've learnt an old dog new tricks this week. You really have, because I never knew this was even a thing. So it's pretty marvellous, and I'm pretty sure you would agree. By all means, please share your experience directly below in the comments if you've had something similar happen. Um, I've never had an Axolotl do this in under my care, which makes this all the more amazing to me. It makes me want to really kind of, when I, when I hear new things, I, I think in this hobby, we're all in a position where we're always constantly learning. And I love that we're always constantly learning. Um, it's part of the beauty of this hobby. It's what keeps me here. Um, but when you see something quite as dramatic as an Axolotl actually changing its skin colour, it's fascinating. So if you've had anything similar, then please be sure to let me know in the comments directly below. And that is pretty much it for this week's video. Thank you all so much for stopping by and checking it out. A special shout out to my Frankie Lottles over on Patreon. You guys are absolutely amazing. If you want to get involved, the information you'll need for the Patreon stuff is directly below. Be sure to hit that like button if you've enjoyed the content this week. And also hit the subscribe button just to keep yourself in the loop. And also ding that notification bell. I'm so cooking in this heat. I can't stay hydrated. I'm constantly sweating. And until next time, to ta for now. Woohoo! Special shout out to my Frankie Lottles over on Patreon. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel. Now, if you want to get yourself involved, you'll find all the relevant information you'll need directly below. I've had, a, I've had a week this week. I really have. It's been so warm and the heat's just kind of got the better of me. I'm drinking so much of this stuff. And I just can't seem to win. The heat is bothering me tremendously. So, um, yes. I'm going now. Toodly do and all that jam. Goodbye. Goodbye. Sweets, Gloria, sweets. Thank you very much. Mix it up, candy go.